It's the MasterChef semi-finals. After weeks of competition, only eight talented chefs remain. They shone in the heats. I like that a lot. Your touch is superb. They've survived knockout week. It's magic. That's just heaven on a plate for me. From here on in, the battle commences. To have loved food for such a long time, to love cooking for such a long time, and then to be in the final eight master chef is like a dream come true. It feels amazing to be a semi-finalist. I can't believe I'm here. The further I go, the more I want it. It's immensely tough. It is literally, without a word of a lie, no exaggeration, the toughest thing I've ever done. I'd love to make it to the final. Whether that happens, you don't know until, you know, you're in there and you're cooking. So long as you're in the competition, you've always got a chance. I just can't wait to get stuck in. Now they will face some of the most daunting challenges. All eight of them are exciting cooks. But this is where we find out who's great. Congratulations. You're our semi-finalists, our best eight. This is all about teamwork. You are about to understand the importance of teamwork and becoming a great cook. Right now, it's an invention test, but an invention test like no other. This is a relay. Beth, Robert, Paul and Emma. You are the red team. Sarah, Tony, Simon and Pete. Blue team. <laughs> so here's the interesting part. Each team will have just one hour and 20 minutes to create one exquisite plate of food. Who's going first? Who's going last? Who's building the dish? Work it out now, please. Do you want to go last and present? Do you want to go first and invent? Yeah, I mean, someone's going to have to do it. I don't mind doing it. I'll go first. OK, I'll okay. go third. I think you yeah. are good at presenting. Okay. And I yeah. think... <laughs> Either first or second, I think I should go. I'm not sure. If I'm happy to be in the middle somewhere. I mean, I'm good with plating, but... You should okay. play. I'm happy with plating. Yeah. Yeah. OK, yeah. cool. Are you going first here? Yeah. Red team, who's team leader? Go first. I am. Blue team, team leader, please. Me first. Team leader, step forward. Each team member will cook for 20 minutes. There is no conferring. You must leave clues as to what the dish is meant to be. The remaining six, thank you very much. Off you go. Good luck, Robert. Thank you. Good luck. Good luck, guys. Be fun. Team leaders, you have 20 minutes to invent and start your dish. Leave some clues. Good luck. Go. Robert and Sarah now have to choose from the ingredients to create their team's dish. So you know each team must use the chicken. There's lots of brilliant ingredients here. It's just trying to get them to gel together and to think about not just what I like to cook, but what everyone likes to cook. I'm thinking of poaching two of the chicken breasts, wrapping them up, so I'll leave that wrapped up for them and they can start poaching it when they come in. It'd be great if you started doing some sort of curry or some sort of dish like that. I'd love that. Whether it's classic Caribbean or classic French, that's what he's done.
What dish are you starting? I am starting what I would call a ballotina chicken breast. That's going to be stuffed with black pudding and pine nuts and poached, a Jerusalem artichoke velouté and sautéed wild mushrooms. Pretty complex for the person that follows you. I'd like to think that they'll be able to pick up on, on what's going on. It's incredibly difficult. There's a lot of pressure on, on who goes first. Who does follow you? Uh, we've got Beth up next. Let's hope Beth likes the sound of your name at the end of this. I hope so. Good start. Well done. Thank you, Greg. I would like to eat Robert's dish. I think palatina chicken stuffed with pine nuts and black pudding is a lovely thing. Let's hope his team members are on his wavelength and also have the skill set to carry out his wishes. I'm terrified. It's not a lot of time at all. So I've got to really make sure I keep my head. That's one of the things I struggle with. You just hope we're in a position where it's not too confusing as to what we've got to do. I'm hoping that she's doing something that's fairly quick cooking, so nothing that's got to be in the oven for a long duration of time. How are you feeling about this right now, Sarah? It's quite exciting. I'm excited to see what comes out at the end. What's the dish you want to start? I think a really amazing roast chicken with lots of flavour from herbs in, served on um, some more herby polenta with some really nice caramelised vegetables. A really nice sauce that's been um, in the pressure cooker as well. But it might not be chefy enough for some of the people in my team, but too bad I went first, I guess. How are you going to relate to your team members what your point of focus is? Hopefully the polenta gives a lot away. I think I might put something on the timer to show how long the chicken's been in, right. as, a, as a hint. You better move. Yep. OK? OK. I like the idea of Sarah putting a chicken into the oven because that opens up a world of possibilities for our teammates. The question is, is it ambitious enough? And is it going to result in something spectacular? Or are we just going to get a roast chicken with some veg? Three minutes of your cooking left, guys. I'm trying to lay out, as John suggested, hints for them about how I see the dish coming together. So I've got all my sauce and stock ingredients next to the pressure cooker, my polenta ingredients next to the saucepan, and then all my veg here, and I'm going to leave my garnishes in here as well. I just want to know what we've got, and then you can start to focus and get something together. You've got 30 seconds. You'll be Thank fine, you. you'll be fine. Good luck, buddy. Yeah. Yeah. Chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Ten seconds, then we swap over. That's it, stop! 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 stop. See you okay, later, go. Don't hang around, you've got 20 minutes, that's it. 20 minutes. Oh, that was a nightmare. Oh, just the stress of it. It's amazing how little you can do when you have to invent a dish at the same time. I've got a chicken breast stuffed with black pudding and pine nuts. Hopefully Beth will put that in the pan and that can poach away. I am really nervous. I hope he isn't angry at me. That's the main thing. Where's the protein? Hopefully he checks the chicken to make sure that's cooking correct. Hopefully, he's getting everything into the pressure cooker to make a really amazing sauce. Right, well, we've got a chicken in the oven. So I'm going to prepare some veg to go with it and maybe try and get some kind of sauce on for Tony. Simon's walked in like a bull in a china shop and just gone for what he thinks should go in the dish. A little bit frantic, I think, at the minute. All the mess has been left there by Sarah. He's just completely pulled apart. The fresh cooker with the masala and all the bones disappeared. The polenta with the cream and the milk all disappeared. You're up against it. You've got to think quick. Hopefully, I've not thought too quick. Beth, what do you make of it? So he's got a chicken and um, black pudding baladine with artichoke puree and some crispy chicken skin. I'm trying to kind of carry on with how good he's been. Which isn't working. What's your part of the dish going to be now? Because he's well underway. I'm going to kind of make sure that I get a kind of vegetable element on it, or at least start a vegetable element, but I'm still not sure what it's going to be. 
Beth seems very shaky and she seems unable to make up her mind what the dish should be. You're halfway, you're ten minutes in. In ten minutes' time, you swap over. What are you going to add to the dish? I'm going to do some roasted carrots and I'm also going to do a spinach puree. I'm going to start a spinach puree. So we've now got a, an artichoke puree started by Robert and a spinach puree started by you. Yep. How does that sound to you? Very puree-y. <laughs> mm. I don't envy the person that comes next in Beth's team. It's turning into puree city. I'm going to be going in, there'll be 40 minutes left, so I'll need to try and understand how long things take to cook. I'm nervous but excited. We need some sort of kind of texture on it, so I was going to do some kind of potato chips or some sort of, like, yeah, slices of potato. You have three minutes. Nervous, really nervous about this test. As long as we don't have any ridiculous techniques in there that maybe one of us is more confident with, then I think we'll be fine. 20 seconds, and then we roll over. What are we going to find? Right, let's relay. Next team in. Chicken. I've done a masala sauce. Yeah, yeah, that's what I wanted. I'm confident he's going to do okay. He'll see the polenta that's on there. This polenta. It's tough. It's really, really tough. <sighs> I don't know how long this ballantine of chicken's been in. That's a tough one. Emma, of course, doesn't know who put the ballantine in the pot. I'm imagining that probably Beth got that in. No clues have been left for her at all. Nobody set a timer. So I think I'm going to take that out. I think I've left it OK for Emma. I'm a bit worried because I'm worried that she's now going to think she's got to do a sauce and I don't think it necessarily needs one. I'm going to start a mushroom and cream sauce. I think it'll go quite nicely. This dish of ballotine chicken is getting a little bit wet. If she makes a wild mushroom sauce as well, we may need Wellington boots to eat it. So... Um, looks like we've got a chicken in the oven. I'm assuming this is our, the basis of our sauce. Or this is for our polenta. Uh, which is great, because I don't often use polenta. I'm watching you procrastinate. Yes, I'm completely honest with you. I've never cooked polenta before, and I wouldn't even know where to start. So if you've never cooked something before, why would you do it? because my team have put it there. They want it to be used. Unfortunately for me, it looks like uh, polenta is the main thing that needs to be done. You know there's a larder up there. And we can go back to that. You can. I would say to you, shift it. Absolutely. Cheers. Tony's decided that polenta's not going to work for him, so he's going to make mashed potato instead. And he's got not very much time to make sure those potatoes are cooked and we're going to have roast chicken with mashed potatoes and some vegetables. How special can that be? God, oh, blimey. You've got four minutes to go. Have you got the makings of a dish in your mind? Definitely the Jerusalem artichoke puree, sliced ballotine of chicken on top, a nice creamy sauce on top of the chicken and some spinach sauce around the edge. I'm very impressed with Emma. Emma has got closer to the heart of what Robert had in mind than Beth did. Emma's very good at sourcing, at getting flavour in, and we really need that in the midsection. And apparently I'm good at plating. <laughs> it's a bit of a daunting task, but take a look at you know, what's around me and, uh, and plate accordingly. The main thing is just a, a, a decent balance of flavours. Um, and it's got to look pretty. 30 seconds till handover. Right, they're coming in. Get ready to swap over. Good luck, mate. Cheers, mate. In a weird kind of way, I actually quite enjoyed that. 
Um, ba -da -ba -ba. I think Rob chose really well. I think we've got a Valentine. I don't think Paul would have any difficulty. I think he's got the makings of a, of a brilliant dish. Those potatoes were put in the deep fat fryer just as Emma was finishing. They've cooked for about 30 seconds. How'd you go? Not great. No? Um, Did you make polenta? No. Oh. I put potatoes on. I put potatoes on. I've never cooked polenta before in my life. Oh, God, this was mush. Awful. Yeah, that was terrible. I think I've left Pete quite a bit to do still. Can we get more stuff? Yeah. Yeah? Doesn't even know what's here and he's going to get more stuff. I wonder what he's going to get. Paul has got the balancing out of the water to find that it was never wrapped tight enough and water tight enough in the first place. So it's been boiling. It's nice and boiled and nice and watery. The dish now belongs to you. Yes. What are you going to finish it to be? The balatine. I need to make sure that I can dry that out and still rescue that pan fry, get a little bit of colour on it. I need to fry off some girolles as well, add those to the cream sauce to finish that off with the crispy potatoes and the carrots as a garnish. How much pressure is there in, in completing everybody else's work? There is a fair amount of pressure. I just need to do a little bit of clearing up so I can think about what it is that I'm going to do. And I also notice that I need to toast off some pine nuts as well to um, sprinkle over the top. Is that right? Yes. Is that right? <laughs> <What> is... <laughs> so, not much in 20 minutes. Pete's real big problem is the mess. There's mess everywhere, there's no clues as to what the dish is supposed to be, how it's supposed to be formed. It's a bit, bit manic, uh, this sort of coming blind, but I think got to get finished. What have we got, Pete? We've got a roast chicken, like a wine reduction here, some carrots, some roasted veg in the oven, and mashed potato. It seems to be quite a lot of mess on your bench here, left by them behind. In this environment, when you've got the pressure of everything going on, it's kind of tough. Are you going to have a chance to put your own stamp on this dish, Pete? I'm going to do a gramolata. Good, Pete. I'm liking your thought process. Yeah. Considering you're, you're working all this rubbish, you're doing all right. <laughs> Thank you. You have six minutes left. Six minutes to finish this dish. Paul's actually rescuing it. But after things that the other team members started, he's just ignoring. I think he might drop the artichoke puree if we've got a cream sauce. Yeah. I think he'll be able to finish everything off with a nice finesse. I think he will make it look really pretty. Is it cooked? Yes. I know what will be on the plate, but I'm not sure whether what will be on the plate was what was envisaged. Two minutes, guys. Two minutes to finish up. I think Pete's got a good foundation to get a good dish up and make it pretty. I think Pete's been left with plenty of clues. Ten seconds. That's it. I imagined it with polenta, obviously. Right. Um, hopefully, it just tastes as good as it looks because it looks beautiful. Mm. Well done. I want to eat it? You did a great job there. Well done, mate. Beautiful. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. It looks really nice. I'm really, really impressed. Was that the dish that you imagined? No, but it looks lovely. Looks like I'd eat that happily. Okay. I'm happy with what everyone's done. Is the artichoke puree on it? No. And it might just have made the dish a bit wet. 
Sarah, Simon, Tony and Pete have made lemon roast chicken breast topped with gremolata, mashed potato topped with pancetta crackling, caramelised vegetables and a masala sauce. Did this realise your vision? I think taste-wise I've been able to taste a little bit and it's beautiful. The only thing I envisaged was polenta but I don't think that takes away from the dish and carrots and meat and some of the garnishes are exactly as I envisaged. I know that you know how to make polenta and so do I, but none of your friends do. And they've just realised. The big lesson from my point of view is the mess. You couldn't see the wood for the trees and nobody could work anything out. The chicken is nicely cooked. It, it's moist, very, very well cooked. The masala sauce is, is fantastic. It's deep, it's rich, caramel flavour, it's got real depth to it. The potato is, is buttery, lovely. I would prefer some better presentation and some more exciting accompaniments. A couple of carrots and a, and a bit of burnt fennel. I like your sauce, it's very, very powerful. It's lovely and shiny and very, very rich. The chicken is lovely and moist, absolutely. There is detail on here which I think is really important you get the semi-final place. Carrots need to be cleaned properly, they're not cleaned properly. The sauce itself, as good as it is, is clashing with the gremolata. Greg's already pointed out the burnt fennel. There's a reason why we're being so hard on you. It's semi-final time. No faults with the flavour, no faults with the, you know, the cooking process. Just maybe it wasn't as exciting or ambitious as they mm. thought. Robert, Beth, Emma and Paul have made ballotine of chicken stuffed with black pudding on a bed of crispy potato discs with roasted carrots, mushrooms and spinach puree served with a creamy sauce. I watched you four very closely. I'm actually pleased that we've got something up because at one point I thought we're not going to get anything at all. The Ballantine, nobody knew how long it had been cooking. So when Emma came in, she didn't know whether you'd put it on, Robert, or you'd put it on. Well rescued, Paul. Thank you. Not really a Ballantine, is it? It's more of a fallen breast on black pudding. <laughs> I like the spinach puree. I really like the chicken with the black pudding. I love the sauce started by Emma, finished by Paul. Love the idea of the chicken with the, with the black pudding. Good idea. It's okay. Not bad. Not bad. The thicker bits of the potato need more cooking. <laughs> the sauce is really delicious. I think the chicken is really tasty. And considering the whole Ballantine fell apart, it's still moist and you've got the lovely seasoning of the black pudding. I don't know whether there's dirt in the mushrooms or in the spinach, but there's grit all the way through the dish and it's crunching on my teeth. The problem is, in this competition, it's not going to just be me and Greg you're going to feed who can be forgiving about it. Mm. It's very difficult, very evenly matched feedback between us and the other team, isn't it? No. I think we've showed a bit more skill, probably, with the Valentine. I think there's stuff. more ambition on the plate. Yeah. Here. With yeah. our team. Yeah. It's a more ambitious dish. I'm really hoping you've learned some very valuable lessons in teamwork and organisation. The good news is that nobody is going home right now. But the next time we see you, the stakes are going to be much, much higher. Off you go. Thank you very much. Off you go. Those are annoying errors because they're not about yeah, exactly. flavour yeah, and they're not about I mean. things being undercooked that's or overcooked. I, mean. I think it did show more ambition. Oh my gosh, I'm exhausted now. It's a good dish, you know, well executed. Maybe it was simplistic, but in 20 minutes each, with no you know, prior 
talking, put out a, a decent plate of food. Under this sort of pressure in that time period, not bad. But far too much mess on these benches, far too much confusion. I've never seen so much mess for one plate of food in my whole life. Well, that was a tough challenge, but looking back, I'm now happy with what I did and what we did as a team. The biggest thing today was the time pressure. Those 20 minutes each just disappeared. It's probably a good thing that nobody's getting kicked out after this because we didn't have the best day. You know that whatever's coming up, you're going to learn something from it. It's going to really push you to your limits. It's exciting, whatever it's going to be. And if it's a step up, it's a step up. You know, that's why we're in MasterChef. I'm sure whatever John and Greg have got hidden up their sleeves is, is going to be massive. We've all seen some of the crazy things that people have had to do, and I can't wait to be a part of it. I really hope they've learnt from today, I really do. I hope they've learnt a big lesson, because what's coming up next? It's all about teamwork, it's all about invention, it's all about creativity, but it's also all about organisation. We know the stakes are so much higher in the next round. And what we want is for them to fly. Next time, the pressure goes through the roof. And it's safe. When the teams compete to cook a celebration dinner. You need to get those lamb back in the oven now. They're not cooked enough. For some of the country's most famous high flyers. Let's go, 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 go. Come on. You've got to go faster, so just get it on the plate. At the end, one of them will be going home.